Welcome to SolarTechDIY.com. This is Patrick speaking. I'm going to demonstrate sealing your Tedlar backsheet to your substrate or to your whip. Now the substrate of course is your tempered glass which has been encapsulated with our SolarTite 384. We also used a little bit of QSIL 214 which is a one-to-one -one ratio mixture that has a very quick cure time of 28 minutes. And I had to do that because I had allowed my SolarTite 384 encapsulant to cure too far so that it was no longer tacky and it wasn't going to uh, adhere to the Tedlar backsheet. So we had to mix just a small amount of the QSIL 214 and it did the trick. So now what we want to do is put a coat or a bead of white silicone caulking around the outer edges of the Tedlar backsheet to prevent moisture, insects, anything from getting underneath the backsheet and at the solar cells. It's just an added layer of protection and it also helps to reflect some of the heat that gets generated as your solar panel sits in the sun day in day out. So. Since the back sheet is cut to size, uh, all we do is load our caulking gun with the cylinder of the caulking and run a bead around the perimeter. Uh, the, it helps to use the specific caulking tools that I'm working with here because you, you want to uh, smooth the caulking out such that it doesn't look like a big blob. Uh, you you want to have a nice smooth looking uh, junction. Uh, so when it's all completed I'll uh, take a close-up photo so you can see how the uh, edge of the Tedlar melds in with the frame. It should be just a white continuous uh, protective sheet. Now the project box that holds the uh, the outbound positive and negative lead. Uh, you can see it there connected to the terminal strip which we had demonstrated earlier and we have another film that depicts how to connect these uh, outbound connecting uh, conduits, the red and the black one there. Uh, that's the next video you'll watch. Uh, but we're not gonna we're not gonna work with that project box during this application of silicone. That's going to be the next time uh, because just as we're sealing the Tedlar back sheet to the substrate we then want to go back and seal the project box to the Tedlar uh, and that's just a bead around the edges of the project box as well as a healthy glob underneath it uh, which when we press down the project box uh, that silicone will spread out and bond the entire surface of that project box with the Tedlar so you'll have a good seal because that is a point of entry for water just as any one of the portions of the edge where it meets the frame the Tedlar I'm talking about. So once you get the bead put all the way around you must then go and work with uh, the tools to smooth it out. Now let's say you don't have these caulking tools. Uh, you can use your finger as a tool to, to smooth out the caulking material before it dries. It is rather messy. Uh, you know, the, the properties that make silicone caulking so attractive for weatherproofing uh, makes it difficult to clean up because it's very sticky, gooey. Uh, but keep a roll of paper towels handy uh, as you make your motions with the caulking uh, tools. You know there, there's excess caulking that will build up on the tools that uh, you have to remove otherwise it just makes a bigger mess. So um, if you don't have those tools no big deal. You can use your fingers. You know, just use paper towels. Now I wanted to talk for a minute about the wiring or cabling. I include as just a bonus in each kit I include a length or a strip of red and a strip of black wire which has a spade terminal connected at the end that you connect to the terminal block. So uh, I try and make it as 
convenient as possible for you so that when you finish this step uh, you can go outside and put your panel to the test or deploy it onto the mounting of your choice uh, and with these 12 gauge uh, wires you can do that you can either test them or use them for uh, connecting with other solar modules the wire end that is open uh, you know the ones that are not connected to the terminal block are stripped of insulation so that you can make a connection of your choice uh, some individuals use a typical wire twist uh, method uh, some people will crimp on plugs uh, I also sell MC4 connectors so you can mix uh, your DIY module with others uh, and if you're cognizant of UV protection or you want UV protection for your junctions uh, which is a very good idea uh, you can adapt them to this particular wire now you wouldn't want to have a very long run with this particular wire it is not suitable for being totally exposed to the environment and you wouldn't want this running across the backyard for example going from your solar panel say to your charge controller uh, this wiring is is not sufficiently insulated uh, it wouldn't be very long before the the coating the insulation material was rendered useless by the UV exposure you know it would just crack and get brittle and eventually succumb to the to the effects of UV radiation so this is fine for this application because it's going to be shielded from the direct sunshine by the solar module itself that's why we have it pointed towards the bottom of the solar panel as opposed to coming out the top and then you know, hanging out over the over the solar module exposed to direct sunlight so we do this for a reason you know, shielding these connective wires by the solar panel itself if you were going to only use this one solar module and let's say you were just going to use it to run a well pump motor or keep the battery charged on a uh, electric gate opener or uh, an electric fence if it's on the farm uh, you wouldn't want to use 12 gauge stranded copper in this configuration to run any distance greater than 20 feet or so uh, and especially if the wire is unprotected out in the open you just you're just asking for trouble because it may serve you for the first few months but you start getting into year one year two and you can count on something eroding the quality or the the, the uh, integrity of these cables so something insulated uh, wiring used for outdoor Malibu lights for example that type wire is typically 10 gauge it comes in a double strand you can literally pull it apart in half so you double the amount of wire you have to work with for the same price uh, and that 10 gauge insulated wire is uh, very suitable to withstanding the environment now you could get uh, specific photovoltaic cable that's also available um, and that's obviously the best practice uh, but you know in the do-it-yourself sense if you if you're using a different type cabling uh, just make sure you use something insulated the proper gauge and in the ebook I give you the formula for determining cable thickness independent of how long the run is the formula that I include allows you to make a precise safe determination of the exact cable thickness uh, for the load that you're going to be carrying because I want you to be safe this is the potential for not only causing failure of your panel but it can diminish the output uh, so use proper size cable uh, these starter cables that I've set you up with they're good to go for connections and uh, boy we're, we're almost done here so I can't wait to get this out in the sun and get a multimeter on it I'm confident we're gonna have a great panel okay we'll see you for the next video where we hook up these connecting wires thank you have a good day